there's just too many important figures in not just anime but everything yeah uh, having to go on to hiatus because of that big old struggling behemoth life right um, just to mention because I want I want the world to know Terry Pratchett and, yeah you know, oh. dying of Alzheimer's mm -hmm. and he, he introduced me to books real books mm. without him I probably wouldn't have gotten into all the nerdy stuff I'm into mm -hmm. so I wouldn't be here now talking to you wonderful 13 people <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's true and it's it's really jarring for like a lot of people that really have enjoyed the animated slates producing um, they could very well just give up hope right which is bad because yeah. again we are only five percent and it doesn't help that you know doing a manga is really hard uh, you know, you're producing yeah. 11, 13, 15 pages of manga a week. And, wow. yeah, and, and you may have assistance, and that's all, all well and good, but that's a huge amount of content. Even with black and white line art, that's a huge amount of content. And, you know, th that world is rife of stories of mangaka just collapsing because of how hard they have to work. And it's just, yeah. you know, and that's what, that's what the reality of Shonen Jump is you have to pump stuff out every week. Must be horrible working for Shannon John. Yeah, Akira Tor Toriyama wasn't a fan. I mean, Toriyama talked a lot about how much they really pushed him in directions he really didn't. Want. Well, he got tired of Dragon Ball Z. Um, not that he hated it, he was just he, he was tired of doing fights and fights and fights. And he's like, can I do something different? They said, no, this sells, this sells. So he yeah. just kept on doing you know the fight stuff, and it was, it's one of the reasons why GT wasn't written by him because he's like, can I? I'm, I'm sick of this. Can I please tell a different story? I've been doing this for like 10 years. Um, he's the one where Goku gets made small. Yes. Correct? I like that one. I like the writing. Hmm. So, at the same time, it was sort of okay that the dude left, bringing in new blood. Yeah, and, and I have no problem with that. And I, I think sometimes a uh, story has to be, especially something like Dragon Ball Z, where it's like, yeah. you know, do you really need the, you know, the, the great brain of Toriyama writing this story about Cell's revenge? You know? Other folks can figure that out. Uh, let's see here. Other manga news. Uh, Libre Publishing has cracked down on scanlation sites. Uh, they do boys' love materials, and they have been sending cease and desist notices to several fan groups that, uh, that do that. And uh, basically, it's kind of interesting. I have to switch over here for a minute. Oh, <laughs> we're seeing you on video now. Isn't that cute? What is that? It's Yuki Nagato. Wow, it is Yuki Nagato. That is awesome. So I just thought I'd bring that. Up that's very nice. That's that's fantastic. <laughs> wow. Um, oh, yeah, my first anime convention. Brillo bananas. Sweet. So anyway, so uh, Libra Publishing <laughs> Season Desist, I have nothing, no, nothing else to say. Um, and I'm they, totally distracted. <laughs> day, day, day. So basically, they have announced, you know, basically, we have the rights to this, you don't, so stop doing it. And the big question will be whether that's going to, um, what that's going to do to manga sales, because there's a whole big debate about whether scanlations really help manga sales or not. And uh, this Libre Publishing was basically brought together specifically to sort of, com not to combat piracy specifically, but to uh, bring together a bunch of different uh, uh, manga titles under, under one platform to do this kind of thing, to be able to, to defend them from scanlators. Um, and it should be pointed out that this is one of the people that's been putting manga on the Kindle and places like that. So in English. So they're trying to get it out there. Um, it's not yeah. just, you know, locking it down. But, uh, interesting. Yeah, the thing with um, piracy is there's always a, a solution that the actual company doesn't want to take. Like with, mm -hmm. uh, with scans of manga, mm -hmm. the, the thing you have to combat it with is samples. Yeah. On, on website, you have to give, not like just the first five pages like we see on most websites. Mm. I mean like half a manga. Yeah. 
because it's not going to hurt your profits to put half manga on because half manga is enough for someone to get so into the story mm -hmm. that they want more. Yeah. And I don't know if I'm old-fashioned, but I'm just one of those people that loves to have the physical thing. So when I read something online, I want the real thing. Even if I read it through, through, and through, I want the actual thing. Um, I wonder how many folks are like that, though, because I've come across a lot of fans who don't buy the physical copy. Yeah, I've, I've met more and more as I've gotten older, and I guess I'm, I'm probably just like a really big narcissist or something that just wants the big <laughs> physical thing. I like things. I do, too. Digital things. I like things. I, I do, like too. Things. Yeah, well, as we saw from, from last week, I have a lot of it. Which, by the way, we're going to do that. Um, after the show, I'll show a little bit of some of my anime collection. Uh, we'll, pop, we'll pop in a disc and watch something, you know, that's interesting. Um, but, yeah, so that's, uh, I, I don't, maybe that's a trend. Maybe, you know, the, the, well, you had sort of the first fans from, like, the 70s and 80s and such who just got it however they could possibly get their hands on the stuff. And you have fans like us from the 80s and 90s and, and such who, you know, we got into it and we, we liked the physical product because we could actually find it decently. Um, but yeah. maybe, maybe now this new generation, they prefer watching it once or watching it digitally or whatever and then moving on. I think that's actually uh, with us more, more to say, mm. is um, having physical things growing up was a status symbol. That's very true. It, you know... Like for me in my primary school, having something physical, yeah. you know, was amazing. Because most kids, it sounds funny in the 90s, but we <laughs> didn't have many physical toys. You know, we just had mm. little toys, you know, like little plastic pieces of poo. <laughs> um, we didn't have anything interesting. Mm -hmm. Having something like a DVD of your own, yeah. well, a VHS back then. Sure. You know, I was I was alive when the introduction of DVD came. <laughs> yeah. The behemoth that is DVD that is now being beaten by an even bigger behemoth. Mm. Right. Yeah. Anywho, but having your own video, you know, that you bought or your you actually got your parents to buy for you. Yeah. Was a big thing, you know. It was like showing off. Absolutely, and most anime that we or, or most toys that we had were, had to be physical. You know, there was no digital equivalent. If you had a transformer, it was a physical thing you manipulated. Yeah. So, you know, th th there was, and I guess for us, a lot of ways, you know, there was no way of owning any digital information, anything in the cloud, anything like that. So that was just how, that was our currency, was being able to come in and say, oh yeah, I got the new, you know, Rodimus Prime. Although no one, no one said that because everyone hated Rodimus Prime. But, Point being, you know, th th that was that was our currency. So I guess maybe now that's changing. I don't yeah, know. It's, it's no longer the physical generation. Yeah, it's scary. It's all, all digital now, which is really disappointing. I like things, and I, you know, I want to one day teach my children to like <laughs> things. I'll be honest. I'm I'm starting to change that way, partly because I'm into role playing, tabletop role playing games, and yeah, that's actually quite true. Yeah. And and that's that, one of the that just happened. Yeah, and that's one of the problems, is that for a long time, all you could do was buy big physical books. And it is yeah. really nice to have some device or a laptop you can take and just have all, those, all that stuff in a digital format. And I'm getting a little more used to it there, so yeah. I don't know. But still, with something like a figure, mm. or a figma for anime <laughs> people, um, it's really nice to have that physical thing. No, yeah. You know, if, it, if, it, if it's something you're passionate about, mm -hmm. you don't mind t it taking up the room because it's just, it's there and you can touch it whenever you want. Mm -hmm. It's like, um, that have me World of Warcraft figurines up top, on top of the shelves, you can't see them. Mm. And again, you can see at the back of my shelf all those DC figures. Yeah. They broke my shelves, they are that heavy. <laughs> but wow. I don't mind because they're awesome, you know? Mm hmm. But it's changing now that people are just happy having a picture of it, you know, like a 3D yeah. imaging software. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's going to become the thing. You know, no one has anything in the rooms. Everyone just has 3D imaging software that you just pay for an image that you can't touch, that you can't feel. Could well be. And certainly, you know, we're moving to that era. And people have talked about having online video where that is um, how, you know, everything behind you is replaced with whatever you want it to look like. Yeah. Um, it's just... It's kind of sad. 
it's it's different. It's weird. I I don't I don't yeah. get it personally. But whatever. I like having my DVD shelf. Yeah. Yeah. It's, a, it's again, it's a status symbol for me. When someone comes in my room, they instantly know what DVDs I like. In the future, people are going to walk into the room and go, "Well, he likes white." <laughs> Nothing else, you know. They're not. Yeah. My, my room is my personality. Mm-hmm. So when people walk into my room, they know who I am. Yeah. Um, in the future, how are we going to display our personalities? Because everyone's going to be talking on computers via text. Let's so kill I, ourselves I'm not now. Going a bit way too philosophical for a, a <laughs> No, that's great. Know, that's it, it's the point I wanted to make. It's it's very true. We're we're, we're falling mm. out of the cool stuff. We're we're not we're no longer the cool kids anymore, Brent. <laughs> I was well, never so, one of the cool kids. Oh no, never. Neither was I. In most of my schools, most of my schools, I sat in the corner. <laughs> I didn't even go to school most of the time. I was one of those homeschool kids. Those weird homeschool kids. Shawa. Yeah. Okay. So, let's see here. Speaking of going digital, uh, MangaGamer.com, which is a visual novel distributor, has announced they're going to release F, um, A Tale of Memories and A Tale of Melodies and all that stuff. That's going to be released with, uh, with authorized English translations that they got from fan translations. So like, yeah, so they went to the fan uh, translator and said, this is a good translation, can we use it? And they said, sure. So they're going to just use that for the translation, and that's pretty awesome. So, you know, um, uh, they're going to release the first, I believe the first two F, well, I'm, I'm sorry, F the first tale, F the latter tale, and Eden will be released, and there are others, you know, going on. So that's pretty cool. Um, one second... What's going on in the chat room? Behave yourselves or I shall have to kill you all. I'm, I'm wise for my age, apparently. <laughs> I'm, I'm 17. I'm, I have a reason to be wise. Actually, I don't, I've always been told I talk way too deep about things. There's no such thing as talking way too deep about things. You can never go too deep. <laughs> so to speak. Anyway... I'm wise, but I'm immature. <laughs> That's what she said. Anyway, um, so let's see here. Uh, let's move on to some sort of more odd news. This I loved. I, I just grinned so much. So um, there's a news story on ANN about manga ka cosplaying. And so Ryoko Ikeda, which if you know who that is, you're awesome. Uh, Ryoko Ikeda did Rosa Versailles which is considered one of the foundational shoujo manga titles. Hugely, hugely big. Uh, she recently uh, went to a, uh, an event and she cosplayed as Marie Antoinette, who's a character in one of her manga. And like, she looks good. Uh, let me see if I can pull up that image there. I have sort of a low-res image, but I think I can show it to you. Come on, one second. Uh, they don't want to do it. One second. That's weird. a and appears to be blocking... Uh, that image. Let me see if I can pull it up here real quick. Um, apparently not. Um, but, not only did she do that, and that's just very cool of her, the creator of Sensual Phrase, Mayu Shinjo, Shinjo, excuse me, she also cosplayed. Um, we'll see if you can recognize this person. Um, where can I put this up? Will that work? That'll do it. She cosplayed as Yui from K-On. 